There was a section in 8.1 um, with on the worksheet where you had a problem where it said solve each equation for y in terms of x. So all we're doing here is we're isolating for the variable y. We're not looking for solutions here. We just want to set this equation and we'll look at this first equation, number 18. We're looking at this equation. We want to get it to say y equals. We're going to find out that later on in section 82, 83, that if it's in a format where it's solved for a variable, it actually makes it easier. So how can we get y by itself? There's two things that are happening to it right at the moment. 2x is being added to it, and negative 1 is being multiplied by it. So what do we get rid of first? We always get rid of things being added and subtracted. What's going to get rid of a positive 2x? Well, a negative 2x. This negative sign is not attached to the 2x. This negative is attached to the y. So many students will add 2x, and that's bad because a positive 2x does not get rid of a positive 2x, only a negative 2x. So these will cancel. I'm left with negative y equals negative 2x plus 5. Do not put that 2x to the right of it. Too many students write this. And we know better at this stage of the year that variables come first. Now, we haven't gotten y by itself. There's a negative 1 in front of it. And there's a couple ways that we can get rid of a negative, but I'm going to show through multiplication. And we have to distribute it to both terms. So that gives me this. Negative 1 times negative 2x is positive 2x. Negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. So that would be my answer. Notice it says y equals. So we've solved for y in terms of x, meaning our answer has a, the variable x in it. That's in terms of x. I said there was another way to do this. And we can do it. What's happening to y? It's being multiplied by negative 1. How do we get rid of things multiplying? We divide by negative 1. But what you have to be aware of is that you have to do it by each of the terms on the right side. So here we have negative 2x over negative 1. Two negatives make a positive. We have positive 5 divided by negative 1. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So both ways we're able to isolate for the variable y. So that would be my answer. We're trying to get y by itself. We're going to get rid of the x being added to it. We're left with 3y equals negative x plus 9. We want the variable to come first. This time we'll show that we divide each one by 3. We get y equals. You can do this. It's probably not the best answer. It looks nice, but for what we're going to use it for, in this case, I'd much rather you write it like that. What's the coefficient of x? A negative 1 in the numerator. 3 is in the denominator. So that's why that's a better answer in this chapter, only in, a, in chapter 8. Otherwise, I don't mind that. Let's go back to this part right here. 3y equals negative x plus 9. What's happening to the variable? It's being multiplied by 3. I can multiply by the reciprocal. Any number multiplied by its reciprocal equals 1 gets us y by itself. And I would have to remember to multiply everything on the right side by 1 third. So we get negative 1 third x. 1 third times 9 gives me 3. Same answer. And the last one, we're going to get rid of 5x. We're going to move it, shall we say. I get 4y equals negative 5x plus 10. I'm going to divide each of the pieces by 4. That leaves me with y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 5 over 2. I like that answer a whole lot better than what the book is showing you. Um, the reason why I like that, also you have to remember to reduce that fraction. Always reduce your fractions. We could get here. 
and we can divide by 4, and I see the book is doing this. Yeah, that's a tough answer. That's not really going to be beneficial. That's beneficial uh, in maybe in some of the other sections that we have, but not in Chapter 8. Chapter 8, when we are solving and graphing, um, it's going to be uh, uh, more beneficial to be able to deal with the equation in that format other than this. We cannot simplify 10 and 4 because... 5 cannot be simplified by 4. So this is my answer. I'll accept it. I'm just telling you, and you'll find out in the next couple of sections how this really doesn't help us that much. But not least, section part 3, section part 3 on section 8-2, graphing equations. Here, we have a far more complicated equation this time. We can still set it up. There's a number of ways that we can go about doing this problem. I think that's 1 6th y equals 3 y x comma y. So we can plug in 1 and we get 1 3rd times 1 plus 1 6th y equals 3. I'm going to make my pen a little bit finer. We get 1 3rd plus 1 6th y plus equals 3 minus 1 3rd minus 1 3rd. We get 1 6th y equals 2 and 2 thirds. We're going to have to convert that to an improper fraction. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 more is 8 thirds. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is 6. We can cancel. That's 2. Wow, did we get lucky. So the coordinate is 1 16. Woo! So that's a lot of work to find a single point. So we would go 1, 16 is going to be way, way up here. One thing that you can do that we can use is we can convert that fraction or that equation. We have 1 third x. 1 third x plus 1 sixth y equals 3. So I'm not too, I'm not a fan of fractions. So how can we get rid of those fractions? Well, we can multiply it by a common multiple, like 6. So we multiply everything by 6. That would give me 2x plus y equals 18. Much easier to plug in numbers and all that stuff. So um, we want to be able to plug in numbers that are going to be conducive and helpful to us. So uh, converting an equation at the beginning and then plugging in points it's going to be far easier when it's a when it's a nice friendly I'm going to plug in 0 first I get 0 plus y equals 18 y equals 18 and my next point is 0 18 this is kind of hard to graph because it's so far off the grid but 0 18 sort of would be above it we can put those two there, and we kind of know that it's going to be moving uh, down right. We can plug in negative 1. All right, now we've reached the point of the coordinate plane. We talked about the horizontal axis being the x-axis and the vertical axis being the y variable, uh, or the vertical axis being the y-axis. Um, we also have uh, what we call um, quadrants. This is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, 
and quadrant 4. You're going to get positive x values, positive y values. So your x values are all going to be positive in this region, and your y values will also be positive in this region. In quadrant 2, you're going to have negative x values but positive y values. We notice that we are on the negative side of the x-axis, but still on the positive values for the y. Region 3 is negative x, negative y. Any point in this region will, be, will have a negative x value and a negative y value. And quadrant 4 will be positive x, negative y. And those are points that are all in this region, not on these. Because if you have a point here, that point's going to be negative 4, 0. So notice our y value is neither positive nor negative. So that's a bit of a trick question. So when they give you this point, and oftentimes the question will say, you know, what quadrant or axis is that point on? Well, that's going to be on the x-axis. 0, 0 is on both the x and the y-axis, and we call that the origin. 0, 0 is the origin. So uh, those are the types of questions you might get a point. All right, what quadrant is uh, 4, negative 2 in? So we go 4 for our x, negative 2 for our y. That there's the location of the point, and that would be quadrant 4. So you'll see questions like that on assessments, uh, stuff like that. So part of the first problems are plotting points. And uh, let's get to those. So part one, it says plot each of the given points. So we're going to take the point. Let's do this, make it a little bit easier. So the point 5, 3. So our x value is 5. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x and 3 on the y. So my point for 3, 5, 3, we would label that a or 5 comma 3. And we wouldn't do these dots and we wouldn't leave those dots on there. I'm just trying to show you visually what, how we get to that point. Okay, so uh, understand you're not going to see those types of, of dashes and stuff. I just want to see that, what you see right now. Uh, the point 7, 2, so you're going to go 7 on the X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 on the Y. That would get me there, and I would label the point B, uh, 7, 2. We don't have to necessarily do that in this equation, or in this example. Negative 5, negative 3. Negative 5 on the X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So my point's going to be there. I'm going to label that C. And negative 7, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2. Gets me right there. And that's point D. So there I did it without making dashes and just used my eyes. So now this is a good one. Here are a scattering of points. And let's look at specific requirements. The point on the positive x-axis. All right, so this consists of my x-axis and I have to look at positive. So positive is going to be over here. Negative is going to be on this side. So the only point that is positive, O is the origin, that's 0, 0, that's neither positive nor negative. So my point would be point E would be the one. I don't know if they say that you have to label it or tell me what that coordinate is, but this is beneficial too. That is 5, 0. 5 on the X, 0 on the Y. The points on the vertical line through point Z. Hmm. The points on the vertical line through point Z. All right, well, here's point Z. The points on the vertical line, ah, so that would be this point, I. That's not an easy question. And that coordinate is 0, 9. So it's on the same level as Z, and it's on the vertical line. I, th 
think that's the answer. I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. The x coordinate is zero. So which point has an x coordinate that is zero? Here's my x. This is 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. So something with an x value of 0 would be that point, that point, that point, or this point. All of those four points have 0 for their x coordinate. So we could label, let's use x, and that would be 0, comma, 5. Notice my x value is 0. The points on the axis nine units from the origin. So here's my origin and on the axis nine units from the origin. So we can go in any direction, down, left, right. So one, two, three, four, five, that's not nine units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I could be one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. P could be one. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, J. So the points would be J, P, and I are nine units from the origin. Nine axis points. Whoops. The points having equal X and Y coordinates. So saying that my X value is the same as my Y value. So we could have uh, zero, zero. Oh, that's a trick question. Uh, we can have, let's see, ooh, that's five, that's five, four. Uh, wow, we have to really look. You're looking for a square, something of a square. Z is nine, nine. Uh, H, no. So I'm looking, L is L, yep, L is a good one. This is a good point. L's coordinate is 9, negative 9. Wouldn't be a bad thing labeling each of those. Um, and I think, no, nope, we got D also. D would be negative 9, positive 9. Oh, those are not equal coordinates, are they? 9, negative 9 would not be the same. And negative 9, 9, Negative 9, 9 would not be the same either. Sorry, those are not equal. The only two solutions are Z and O. My bad. Mr. Mac will make mistakes. The point in quadrant 4, here's quadrant 4, nearest the y-axis. So here's our y-axis. What is in quadrant 4? So P is not in quadrant 4. Remember, it's on the y-axis. So I'm going to say the point is V. That is the closest point in quadrant 4 because P is not in quadrant 4. That's a trick question right there. Okay, so the answer would be V. That point is 2, negative 8.